Bien, pues yo tengo el placer de presentar a Dominique Trouche. Es profesora titular en la Universidad de Toulouse Paul Sabatier, Toulouse 3, Toulouse 3. Eh, y sobre todo es, bueno, es una amiga, eh, hace ya 12 años que nos conocimos en, en un coloquio precisamente titulado eh, ar, eh, Arte y Memoria, o Memoria y Cultura, Memoria y Cultura, en la Politécnica de París. Y eh, no es ningún misterio, sino que fue entonces cuando yo empecé a conocer a todos estos artistas eh, de los que estamos hablando hoy y que están hoy aquí con nosotros, con lo cual es una... Uh, es un contexto muy, muy propicio. Ella es, especial, es especialista en comunicación uh, y sobre todo uh, en comunicación, en dispositivos de comunicación, uh, memoriales y demás, en relación con uh, la guerra, en relación con los conflictos y uh, sobre todo ha trabajado mucho sobre las puestas en escena de la historia. Uh, donc, uh, ha publicado un libro fundamentalmente Mise en scène de l'histoire donc, puestas en escena de la historia relacionado con uh, la, uh, la visión de comunicación en torno a los lugares de las uh, guerras digamos de la primera y de la segunda guerra mundial uh, fundamentalmente aunque no exclusivamente ha trabajado también sobre las obras de, de los artistas alemanes de Johann Gertz entre otros y eh, no voy a ser muy largo, eh, siempre he tenido la ocasión de encontrarme en, en varios coloquios porque trabajamos sobre temáticas muy similares, muy próximas y eh, siempre he aprendido un montón de cosas, así que creo que hoy también va a ser el, el mismo caso. Y sin más, te cedo la palabra. Sí. Um, I'm not fluent in English, also if I express myself a little clearly, Uh, I invite you to indicate it to me, uh, so I express it differently. Uh, first, I want to introduce my work uh, to allow a better understanding about this present speech. I'm working on the war memorial uh, and the historic war sites since, since 2001. My first objective was to understand how communication involving war casualties was carried out. Uh, so I worked on a tourist perspective. How a visit of war territories, First and Second World War, uh, is taking place, especially in France. The notion of experience was central. Uh, is central for all the places, uh, be it it's a museum or a monument. My work has shown a common process for all the visits. In nutshell, first, riding on the highway shows signs of war, then marked trails of wars arise. The facade of museums depicts a custom representation of war, a rift, for example, at Caen Memorial or Orado Sauvignon Memorial, a burning at Diebval, Memorial and the cave at the Deportations Monument in Paris. Finally, an exhibition or an event takes place inside the monument or the museum. I also worked on some contemporary memorial to see the meaning of their experiences. And I have shown, for example, the deterioration of visibility, the dissemination of prisons, and the significance of spectral in every step of sites, museum, and war memorials. Then I have been more focused on the study of some specific memorials, and these last few years I have tried to think about the notion uh, of the monument and to explore it in a contemporary perspective. The main point is the memory supremacy, which appears more visible, uh, yeah, more visible in French, reflected by a change in the names of monuments, monument mort, as switched to memorial. This tendency tends to deny that everything is about death, and usually a violent one. The word memory is superseding the word death. People tend to discuss more, more easily about memory than death. 
I'm radioactive, of course. You understand it. In that way, I'm close to Heinrich Koselek, for whom death as elemental event uh, is, for, is forgotten. I am assuming that since the end of the World War II, the architectural and artistic creations celebrating the war casualties do not hold any specific plastic features allowing one to identify the reason of such a construct at the exception of the use of a dedicated symbolism. <coughs> memory, ar memory artistic items may appear a lot more related to death than the memory since the antiquity at least. Thus, monuments built these days come from a symbolism more related to contemporary art and memorial architecture. We will aim at identifying and analyzing cross-secular dimensions carried by such representations. In other words, we will try to understand the current formal representations involving deaths. More specifically, the thematic analysis of formal transversal soul elements in memorials shows a recurring expression of death in our society. As such, the word memory is now a recurring substitute for collective and violent deaths. But our work shows that death is always present in representations. In French language, we, we could see the historical transformations through the passage from death to memory. The first half of the 20th century, the word monument, more, monument to death was used. Then we are using now memorial. The first expression is still usually used um, regarding the First World War. I don't have time to discuss uh, more about this point, but it's important to know that this coincided with the taking into account in the notion of victim in particular. The main point is that the 20th century, since the World War II, is acquainted with a change in the mode of narration. Uh, as you well know, it was thus a question of speaking in terms of postmodernity, in particular regarding architectural work, deconstructivism, counter memorial or uh, counter monument with reference of uh, G. M. James Young, combi, memo combi memorial to Bill Niven or anti-monument to Joringert, etc. The studied transverse forms are neither presented exhaustively, not from a typology. Our reflection is ongoing. This is why our approach will be linear through different points. Does these points intersect each other at multiple levels? First point, oh, sorry, I forgot. First point, transparency. I am going to work here through five interesting examples. First, uh, Emmanuel Saulnier, Reste Résisté, Stay Resist, work. It was inaugurated on October 8, in uh, 1994, and was established in the old cemetery destroyed, old uh, destroyed cemetery of the village of Vassion Vercors in France, the Garden of Memory, and was erected in memory of the civilian casualties of Vassion Vercors. The Garden of Memory exhibits in the old cemetery bombed the village of glass plates the size of Tom. Positioned vertically, the plates oscillate with the winds. The idea is to mark the, import, the importance of landscape and nature, which henceforth bear witness to history as the author of memory. Second example here, the Spiegelbahn, is located in the Seglitz marketplace in Berlin, inaugurated in 1995. Uh, 
uh, it's a work from Wolfgang Goschel and uh, Joachim von Rosenberg, architects. Wanted, they wanted to commemorate the Jewish inhabitants of the district dead in deportation during the Second World War. The Spiegelwand is a wall-shaped work, various pieces of information are engraved, like a photograph of two children lighting the candles of a menorah and two photographs of the synagogue at Orienne One represents the synagogue before its restoration, its restoration, the second after. The wall also includes um, a text for passerby, as well as names, dates of birth, addresses of Berliner people before their deportation, dates of deportation, and if available, the concentration or extermination camp when, where they were deported. Uh, uh, the other example <coughs> is the work School Windows of Memory in Vilnius, in Lithuania, by Ost Eisen. In 2009, uh, sonation, an installation in the Vilnius uh, Elementary School in which were installed images of a former synagogue that once stood in that place. Ima images are placed onto the windows of the school. The goal was to remember the last Jewish community of Vilnius, but the installation was only allowed to take place during the school holidays. Then uh, the walking monument known as the House of Silence was erected on the grounds of the former camp of Bergen-Belsen in Germany in 2000. Created by Ingemar Reuter and Gerd Wiener. It's an architectural sparse diamond <coughs> shaped room with wooden pews and a table at one head on which tributary pebbles are laid. Standing at the rear of the space and gazing upwards, visitors look through the semi transparent roof skyward. And finally, a little apart, the Arrow Fruit Bridge of the Archlech Gunther Dominic at the Nürnberg Documentation Center. Uh, this uh, work is located in the former convention, uh, or in the former convention center erected by National Socialism. It's, it was inaugurated in 2001. The Arrow Fruit Bridge is part of the architectural work of Gunther Dominic operated on the side part of the Palace of Congress to install a permanent exhibition. The gateway row is the last step of the visit. It drills the interior of the Palace of Congress outside. It is made entirely of glass and allows visitors to cross the interior of the architecture seen by the natives. And I can, allow, uh, I can also cite for example, the Vietnam War Memorial uh, Wall in Washington, D.C. The use of glass uh, in these five examples as a great surprise calls for an analysis of the material's transparency and its means. With the use of glass, a device is developed on the visual. What to see, what to watch. The glass is framed. They are limited by the support built by the architect or the artist. And yet, it is also the decoration by a dis displacement of the gaze. Convergence, convergence lines in the perspective are created according to the angle where the look is directed. It is therefore both a vision of as it is, uh, that is, that is that, that's proposed as parallel to its absence, a visual multiplication <coughs> according to the shell, a misunderstanding for the visitor, etc. Mm -hmm. Thierry Paco writes, uh, thus, transparency is at the same time appearance and evidence, and in another register, presence and interference. For Emmanuel Sommier, the landscape is the presence, this other witness of events. However, 
the non-fixity uh, of the support of the blades and their soying through the wheels makes it difficult to see, makes it uncertain. The same uncertainty is found in Spiegel Farms as the work is not translucent but grey. In fact, the background that is reflected in the work is changed. The contours are real, known, the city center, the market, trees, passerby. However, the superposition with the names of the victims of the Holocaust, as well as the symbols drawn on the monument, implies a choice, <coughs> a choice for the one who sees. What does he decide to look at? This leads, Emmanuel Sonnier declared, this leads, Emmanuel Sonnier too declared, to make the same space appear until it disappears is intensely to seek, to seek a state of presence in full awareness of the absence. The dimension of absence is particularly strong in the hot horizon installation, which is intended to remind the eradication of the Jewish community of figures. <coughs> Transparency is a priori an operator of obvious <coughs> but in use its multiple possible in terms of visible can cause an alteration of the visible or invisibility. Transparency is supposed to be the modality of the welcome you give go the world go to the world that of transappearing the event of what appears but through what does pieces, courses. The trans appearance associated with the interference that allows transparency produces a presence, an apparition. In this the spectral dimension present in many works, regions especially as expression of the relation to death of a difficult past. We will develop it further. The passage to crossing. In the same way, I propose you to see these through five examples in particular. First, Lani Caravan, in Corbeau, passages, built uh, between uh, 90, uh, uh, 1999 and 1994. The memorial was erected in memory of Walter Benjamin, his tragic death on September 20. 1940. It represents a rectangular curtain uh, conduit that descends directly from the cliff to the sea by steps. In the second part of the monument, a glass plate contains a quote from Walter Benjamin. Honoring the memory of anonymous is a more difficult task than to honor those of famous people. The idea of history is dedicated to the memory of anonymous people. Second monument, monument to struggle or monument gate from Victor Tolkien, Tolkien and Janusz Dambek in Maidanek. It was erected around the Maidanek concentration and extermination camp in Lublin, Poland. It is located after the museum uh, before entering the camp shaped as an access door. It offers a perspective of the camp, the barrack built by the Nazis, as well as the mausoleum. And it also offers the symbolic physical access to get into the ruins of the camp, formerly used as a direct passage from those directed to the gas chamber. This monument is installed on a forecourt by which one reaches after a few steps, then by the passage of a cotton steel barrier representing a barbed wire, and finally again elevated by some ste stepped cross. Third example in Toulouse, Monument to the Warrior of Resistance. The idea of passage is central in the entry of this work, the visitor must uh, go down a few steps after which he crosses the forecourt and then open 
the door, the door which makes him enter inside the memorial. Then uh, Arvelito's famous work, Monument to the Martyrs of the Deportation in Paris. Uh, we will dwell here on the beginning of the work. The visitor reaches the interior of the monument by an imposing staircase, narrows in width and different. And I, I could all, also talk here about the narrow foot bridge of Punta Dominique. The notion of passage refers directly to the funerary uh, symbolism. It can be found either in the form of the monument, see the work of Dani Caravan or the Monument to Struggle, or according to its terms of access, steps, corridor, door. The passage induces a circulation, a bodily movement, and not only visual an engaging spectatorial experience. There are the limits between the world of the living and the dead. Michel Ramon speaks of the spaces of the passage to signify what constitutes a transition class between now and after. Crossing the sticks is difficult and random. Either the eye will go uh, takes place on the Champs Elysees, an enchanting place where the right to a state are in the terrace, a place of eternal torments. Sharon took the award left by the dead man's family in his mouth as a reward for making the passage of the river to the dead body. Without this, the dead will be condemned to wander for eternity. The difficult related to is the note of the cross of the sticks. Memorials, like many war history museums by their entrance, door, facade, mark the importance of crossing. The reference to the door uh, of L in the Divine Comedy of Dante is claimed, for example, at the struggle, uh, at the monument to struggle, which echoed the sentences engraved at the top of his door. It is through me that we go to the plaintive city. It is through me that, that to eternal torments we arrive. It is by me that we arrive at the informal state. Divine justice wanted by birth, being was given to me by the Almighty, supreme wisdom and first love. Nothing was before me but eternal things, and myself forever I was last like death. Leave all hope on entering hell. Moreover, this passage is mostly an inviting, disturbing, no indication is voluntarily given to the visitor. This passage calls, calls for an experiential encounter between the visitor and feelings possibly experienced by the dead during the Second World War, imprisonment, suffering and inability to free, for example, at Danis Caravan and at the memorial of the martyr of the deportation in Paris. Like many war history museums, the passage serves as a medium between the inside and the outside, sort of mediation element during which the modalities of visit experience desired by the creator of the work are established. Third, imprisonment, oppression, after the passage, some memorials continue to visit by confinement, or they also operate simply by a near total course of the space where the visitor circulates. We will analyze uh, these points through five examples. Uh, the memorial in Orado Suplan is, is located inside uh, the old uh, village. Uh, this monument was originally intended to be a martyrdom, at the same time the tomb of the ashes of the victim, place of mediation for the families, and finally place of gathering during the commemorations. As described by Elizabeth Sain, the building did not have the intended destiny. It is now used to expose objects found in the burgle. 
built inside the village, it contains the remains found in the rubble, everything objects, both pets and more items. In fact, it's just like a very big tomb, a staircase, and a very low square space of sailing and enclosed. The memorial to the uh, created homosexuals, um, the word homosexual and persecuted are, because uh, I'm not sure about the right uh, English, uh, um, uh, uh, to write this type in question, um, by Mika and Green and Inga Praxens. It's a cube made of concrete. On the front side, there's a window uh, through which visitor can see a short film uh, of two men kissing. Then we will see the work of Misha Ullman with the empty library in building, located under the floor of the Bebel Platz. Uh, the artist built uh, a white empty library. The empty library is protected by a piece of glass uh, where a passerby can walk. In the first three examples, the concept of confinement is translated relatively directly. The monument has the shape of the cave or bunker. Way of symbolizing uh, the oppressor, the disappearance, but also to preserve preciously as in a box, which is fragile. For the memorial to persecuted homosexual by the nationalist socialist regime, and the IT library, the space that the work designates as what there is to see is closed, inaccessible. Only the gaze can project into the memorial space. For the empty library, the window, as the city papers, gives a bird's eye view of the installed library. The visitor is excluded from the, the interiority of the work, but because it is located elsewhere. The memorial to persecuted homosexual is broadcast in a film in which a couple of men and a couple of women are kissing one another. They are hidden from praying eyes as if to better claim the normality of their choice of life. The empty library gives everything to see a white and an anti uh, sorry, a white and an anti library in reference to the burning of May 10 <coughs> on the same place. The Asian inscriptors <coughs> note the books that had disappeared during the year to that day, but also all the exterminated readers. The confinement by the SAS of these two words is proposed by an external point of view as to exaggerate the field confinement, without doubt, but also points out in all simplicity what there is to see and finally to look at, either to open oneself to otherness or to remember the part of perversion present in humanity. The confinement operates as a communicational modalities, modality to make the visitor feel an experience and a, as a funeral modality the tomb of the sacred victim apart from them, a space in which the visitor is either invited to physically move, as for the memorial to the, the, to the glory of the deportation of Jews, or to look differently. Four points, disintegration, the edge of in question. I could talk about here Dani Caravan, uh, a simple war memorial in Serouville, in France, built in 2005. Another war memorial about North Africa in France, built in 2000 and 2004. Another war memorial for also Algerian war, built in 2009. Uh, the monument to the memory uh, to the memory of the prisoners in Los Medinales in 2009 in Spain. Then I could uh, talk about Chosom de Danube Bank, a work by 
um, uh, Colonel Toge and uh, Hyunya Power. It is dedicated to the victims of the Holocaust in Budapest, member of the Jewish community in the Hungarian capital who were brought and murdered on the riverside by the militia road process. This forced them to take off their shoes before being shot and thrown into the Danube. I want also talk about Stolperstein uh, project by Gunther Deli, uh, since the, this work began uh, in to, uh, since um, 1996. Uh, the, uh, for those who don't know, uh, the Stolperstein are literally stones on which we come to stop, or stones of struggling are installed in front of places of arms of Jews, gypsies, political and religious opponents, homosexuals, witnesses of Jehovah, disabled, deserters, workers subjected to forced labor, more general, generally to uh, victims persecuted or killed by national socialism during the Second World War. These are actually plates the size of canvas stones, which represent a human placed in front of the last known residence of these people of the past in the city of Paris. The first installation took place in uh, 1997 uh, in Kosberg, the district of Berlin, without legal authorization since 2000. Uh, Stolperstein has been installed throughout Germany and the project has taken a, new, uh, a, a European dimension. Last example, Jupan Gertz. In 1993, um, 2,146 stones in visible monuments against racism in Saarbrück, in Germany. Saarbrück. Originally drafted illegally, the project involved uh, the removal and replacement of the plate of uh, the 2,146 pavements of the, on the southern Palace Castle Square, which led to the former residence of the Gestapo. The goal is uh, to engrave the names and locations of the Jewish German cemeteries, then seal them face down to their original location in the square making the inscription hidden to possible. The examples of memorials using cotton still are very numerous and also um, indiscriminate the First World War, the Second World War, the wars of independence for France, the lynchings in the United States, etc. The use of this choice of uh, state of steel is also found in museum. From which this point of view, the facade of the museum of the memorial of Orado Sorglana is very interesting. Contesting is a self-patinated steel which forms superficial corrosion. The work appears as in a state of decomposition, in permanent evolu evolution that may lead to flaws. Metaphorically, this reference to disappearance in action is interesting, but it is not the only possible sense. It can also refer to events or a story that leave traces, whose past is not settled and thus in action. Thus, leaving traces for certain works means to not have a close form defined in opposition to a statue, for example. This is the case of the Stolperschan project, which includes the concomitant principle of dissemination and retorialization. From the Second World War, the monument to the dead is no longer assigned to the geographical area studied by Antoine Poe. Its special situation is further worked by a, um, by a burst of its presence throughout the territory. Thus, the store portion work um, is always located in front of three holes uh, of entry door. The place 
if present is predictable, but the presence or not of padding stones in, on the other hand, unpredictable. This building may not be a place of residence for a victim of the Second World War. The victim may not have been identified yet. But if the store pastor has scattered throughout Europe, they may the merit of retelling Rhetorialisation. Rhetorialisation. Sorry, English is terrible. Somehow the victims, by association them with the place of the lived while their body uh, was probably yeah. never found. Even more troubling, Johann Gertz, through the Invisible Monument, elaborated monumental works on the 1046 canvas stone engraved with names of Jewish cemetery that, that mostly uh, disappeared after the Second World War. However, no indication is available on the engraved and non engraved blocks. It is therefore impossible to look at, locate them since their placement was rendered. I know about the computer, but in fact, the entire square is touched by the presence of a work that is both invisible and omnipresent. Metaphorically monumental, the work is by its hidden presence on the entire square. The web of conscientization of the passerby transmits by imagination the presence of the work in the square. Francoise Gaillard evokes uh, the dimension of interiority. Yeah. <laughs> In other words, according to a point of view, these artists have shown their will to restore the memory to its interiority. Its purpose starts from the, the observation of the void represented artistically as an expression of the unspeakable. But this production do not create emptiness. This void is full of meaning. And in the case we have just described, there is imaginative material to create the meaning of the work. In fact, we are perhaps uh, in an anti-monumental situation, as Johann Gertz was able to claim for another of his achievements. However, the projection of the passerby necessary to the meaning of the work impressed the passerby, visitor, inhabitant, to refer to her is part of imagination when confronted with the past. In fine, the monument, in monumental form, even metaphorical and in disintegration, refers to the million of deaths. To this match with, to a large extent, have not had in the eyes of the living a place marking their passage on earth by defining and nominating graves. Five the living wrestling monument for his way. First work uh, of a Heisen, memorial to memorial, or uh, we saw it before. And Andreas. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, the living monument of Biron from Johann Gertz. It is a public commission to replace the monument to the dead erected in 2001. Johann Gertz worked in collaboration with students of the School of Fine Arts in Bordeaux. He imagines a useful monument that could be used in multiple ways as a recycled bin, for example. He wanted, he explains it to take art and put it so far from art that it will become something useful. In the end, the goal was to go away from the image, go away from the monument. With its students, they agreed to revise a refined archetypal form, which will then be covered with red plates bearing the responses of the inhabitants of Behom to a secret question asked by the artist. 
in total, uh, in total of uh, 127 answers, answers, as many inhabitants are now in red on red plates affixed to the movement. And last one, Dan Caravan, Miss Hap, and Regenburg in Germany. The work uh, is located on the site of the former Regensburg synagogue. It takes over its structure by tracing its, its foundations. It goes to the explosion of the Jewish community from Regensburg in the um, um, 16th century. These three artists' works are formally very different from each other but have in common the relation to life. By this dimension, the monumental form undergoes a sort of nerve. Despite the harshness of the material story, still, the violence of the events to which they refer, the places where they are located, this work works live. They literally, to the monument of Heinz and Andreas Nitz, or express life, such as the living monument of Piron, or welcome life, like that of Dani Caravan. These three works bring, in fact, a singular relationship of the public to books by the touch, uh, with a memorial to memorial, makes senses and solicits the visitor. The work has the same temperature as the human body, as if it was a part of us, because these events are actually part of this history of humanity. Ms. Ra, meanwhile, offers space of play and rests in the art of the place that it, it, the inhabitants uh, are apparently, apparently integrated. It has become a kind of street furniture item destined, designed and available to us by. Finally, uh, as Johan Gertz explains about the living monuments, the sponsors obviously wanted to make it present alive, take back possession of it. For Johan Gertz, remembering is always an act of contemporaneity. Contemporaneity. I still remember the present day today. I do not believe in monuments. They make me think of death. It must be um, cunning with death, it must not have the last word, you must have the stupidity to report. If I say memory, I mean, I mean forgetfulness. If one is there, the other is not far away. Memory is like blood, it's go when it does not show. This is the problem of monuments. And it is this condition that will allow the inhabitants to see the monument, to make it present again in the village, to respond to the other. Johan Gertz has invested the world of inhabitants of the monuments, participating in being an actor and transmitting a world to a monument reverses the pastist vision, pastist vision that is represented until then. Johan Gertz also wishes that this work does not stop with this intervention, but is taken away and continued in perpetual change. The last one, promise, spectral. Oh, I will talk about the missing house of Christian Motarski in Berlin, and uh, also his entire work using clothes and archive. It's a missing house. Like you can see, there was a house there. The artist chose to put plates to identify where the last inhabitants who were living in the Second World War. And I will talk uh, about all the monuments who are representing unknown human bodies and often privation. Like Will Lamert with uh, Jewish victims of fascism in, in Berlin, and also Alfred Africa, monument against war and fascism in uh, Vienna, in Austria. Uh, the presence of a spectral dimension is found at each point we have just seen. 
I know that uh, your guest is keen on the fact that death does not win, yet it seems to me that bispectrality signals itself, it challenges. Transparency refers to spectrality by the effects on the visible that it allows. During the passages, meetings can be done because there is always the absence that can refer to all his absences. In the confinement, the technical devices of the memorial to the glory of resistance with broadcast films containing images of resistance offer a part of unreality as the, the images are vague as disturbing because the past was. The notion of disintegration is related to spectrality too by its very meaning, its uncertain contours. It also seems to me that a memorial to a memorial implies a troubled dimension because of its it identical to ours. It gives the impression of being alive, of containing life. Is it not questioning for a stainless steel shape? If we had to identify a dimension that is more transversal to spectrality in works, I believe that the principle of denomination of the inhabitants of our contemporaries, uh, of the past is central, sorry. Naming them to better identify them or bring them back to the memory of our contemporaries. Naming uh, Emily Flanchard that the use of characters from the past in archaeological museums, exhibitions, through the staging allows an individual relationship with the visitor, integrated in the different enunciative frames, which are so many degrees of reading. The character of the past refer both to reality and to fiction. For part time, for example, by their due and strutting presence, summons the inhabitants of the past. Factual data recorded on the store part time are associated with an individual never figured, but representable, imaginable by his gender, man, woman, his name, his age, his place of life the places of concentration and extermination by which he had to go through. Here a child, there a woman on her 30, then a man in his 50. Inhabitants have disappeared, but their names and information revives, not by memory, except the name of close uh, but by the memory of the history of the Second World War and images that represent it in the media. The person does represent it uh, is Simone and can therefore take shape and body by imagination. Not a concrete re representation reviving some feelings, but a spectral representation, a form of spirit of the story in the sense of Jean-Francois May. It is as if the inhabitant were summoned because he had lived in a place and at a specific historic, uh, historical period of history. But there was always something of him that, that was evanescent, impalpable. The work operates in a way a superposition, updating a perennial link between the past and the present. Thus, the significance of Stolperstein's stomach rock, storm on which we come to stop, and faces by its first uh, meaning the fact that one stone falls on the pavement, and as a second meaning, the, uh, the idea of a beauty evanescence is reminiscence. It is all the more important that at the entrance of the building, a downtime, is imposed of the inhabitant, moment during which which he must take his eyes, open his door, walk in, and then close. Process of access to the private domain that can uh, make this spectral presence shrouded. A similar phenomenon uh, takes place.
place with the missing Jewish of Christian Wotowski, where the plates bearing the names of the former Jewish inhabitants of the house uh, look like street signs. On the contrary, it is certainly uh, the former Jewish inhabitants of the house look like street signs. Oh, I made that. I said that. Oh, sorry, I made that. On the contrary, it is certainly a wish to bring the missing to life, but to take them live again in the places of life to which they have been torn. The list of names on the Spiegelmann is superimposed by transparency on the wall plates. This is the same principle that animates the wall of the Vietnam War Memorial in Washington. Finally, it seems to me that uh, the relatively frequent corporal representations of works relating, relating to the Shoah are particularly strong because it summons a, be a being or being through the visible. Perhaps an attempt to represent the nothing that uh, George Agamben describes in Which Remains of Auschwitz. My work in the field of art, museum, and World War site has been to visit the site as a visitor and to preserve each element through photography and video. Uh, it was not during the visits that I became aware of the importance uh, presence of a spectral dimension, but by the work of viewing photography and videos. It is as if the creative devices, whether artistic, museographic, architectural, or communicational, were caught up in this through spectrality while claiming a strong relationship to memory. This passage through fiction and its current importance appears to me as one of the elements that explain, explain spectrality. But not only. There is spectrality because there is repetition and narrativity of the story shown so François Mel. This, this creates double that leads to overlays and so it brings trouble. I do not believe that the re relation to this as, as, uh, as elaborated in the work studied here is new. It seems to me that this has to do with our ontological relation to death, as it could be studied in anthropology by Ruben Santomai, in philosophy by Emmanuel Levinas, or in more recently in sociology by Patrick Bodek. Well, thank you and sorry to read my